Hello people and today welcome to another Roblox tutorial and we're going to make a trail shop UI so if you don't know what a trail shop you know it you know you buy trails and you just have that trail on your back so that's a good customization for your character and yeah let's go ahead and get in so before we do that we're gonna tell what our trail is trail is you know good touches you know making a trail like you know like that it had some little bit of good touching some you know like that so i'm going to show you how to make a trail for yourself so grab a part grab whatever part you want and then you go to the model and then we're gonna uh, get this arrow on this crate and then we're going to make an attachment and then we're gonna make one right here and one right here to disable it you just click here and there you go, you got your two attachments. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click part, insert an object, and then we're going to insert trail inside the part. As you can see we got a trail, as you can see, you everything good, but you just need to set it up. So how to set up is you're going to do attachment 0, and then put it right here. Attachment 1, put it right here. And that's yeah, easy. You just made your own trail, as you can see. There is some good properties, you know, the color, you know, it makes a good color and also some good gradients and stuff. Like that. And, you know, all this, uh, these properties that I'm not going to show you that one. So, yeah. Once you have created a trail, we're going to do some uh, good things. So, since you know how to make a trail, now I'm going to show you how to make a trail shot DOI. The first stop is you're going to need to get my motto, which is called the Trail Shot Mario. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for the one model so you can take one. Once you got the motto, so what you're going to do is click the four boxes and then click the one you just brought. As you can see, you will see a, a group called a Shop Trail GOI. So you're going to open that. And as you can see, you will see these locations. These are the locations. So if it says go to replicate storage, drag it in the replicate storage and press Ctrl U to ungroup it. Same thing right here. Go here, bam. Go there, and bam. Now you can see the shot GUI, it opens this cool old uh, icon so you can just customize whatever you want. I already made the GUI so you don't need to uh, know what, what GUI is supposed to do. Once you actually made your trail, as you can see, like this, add some good little faded stuff. So how to make your own trail is you're going to click this and you're going to rena rename this whatever you want. I'm going to name this fire. And then I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a int value. We're going to name it the price and then ch change what price you want. I'm going to pick 150. So I'll take $150 and I got to the trail. That's actually it. If you want to make more trails, just press Ctrl D and then click whatever you want. I'm going to pick red. And then I'm going to click that, that, there we go. And I'm going to change the pricing to about $50. And, and we're going to make, you know, a rainbow-ish one. So have fun doing this time lapse. As you can see, I have made a rainbow. Yeah, that's actually it. That's how you make the trail. And then uh, for the events, you just need to keep them because they are super important. I'll tell you why. Back in when I do get over to the scripting. So I'm going to tell you one by one for every code what I wrote. So no worries, you will not be confused. So the variables, you know, it makes a data store. So... You can just change your name, whatever you want. I just name it Trail Shop Chest. Test, I mean. And uh, you, we go to the function. So, you know, the function, we'll get onto that one after we go to the player join. So, when a player joins in this game, we're going to set up the stats. So, we're going to set up the coins. We're going to set up the, their inventory and the equip pad. Go equip trail. But when there's a character added, then we're going to set their uh, equip trail, so which is one right here. 
So uh, we're going to get down to that equipped trail. So so we got the characters. So we got the characters. So if it's if the trail is not empty and also the character is not empty, then uh, then we're going to have to check if there are if there are attachments and there's a trail. So when is there to switch? If there's attachment, we're gonna destroy it. If there's a trail, we're gonna destroy it. If the player switches their trail, then we're gonna add their attachments to the humanoid root part to the head. Humanoid root part, you make you can do this in the torso, but I like the humanoid root part better and the head because they're two recognizable parts. And then we're gonna set the trail to these attachments, and then we're gonna set the parent to the character. And then uh, uh, when they when they leave and they come back, they'll get the trail. And it will come back. We will talk about the equip trail value for down later. And if they switched, then uh, uh, if they equip another trail, if I mean, then we're going to switch to this one. Else, if they unequip, we're going to remove it. Next up, we're going to load up our data. So we're going to get our data. And then we're gonna get our success and error message if they if the success if they get enough data. And if it's not empty, then if it's still loaded, then we're going to uh, get the coins. So we're gonna get the coins, we're gonna get our trail, we're gonna get our trails. And yeah, for the bulls, I will talk about that later. And else if it's not loaded up, maybe it's a new player, we're gonna print this. And then if their data is also loaded, then we're gonna fire their client. We're gonna to go to the client for now later because this is where the important part is. If the player left, you know what, I'm just gonna make the code. Player left. If they left, then we're gonna get our data holder. We're gonna make a table. And we're gonna get and we're gonna get their coins, get their tr equipped trail, our current trail and their table. So we're going to get our table, which is their inventory. And then we're going to make a pcall function, which is a success error from message. And we're going to set their data to their user ID, like that. If it's a success, then the data is saved. Else, the data is have a problem. Bind to close means, uh, bind to close is currently like when a, a server shuts down, it will still save your data. So we're going to get all the players and do the same thing. All right, that's a lot of mouthful crap. Do the place, and we're gonna go to the shop GUI. So as you can see, I already made your shop GUI, so you don't have to watch me, you know, do make stuff because that would be super boring. Uh, as you can see, we got a shop button. As you can see, we got a shop. This is an image, which is from Roundify. I'll put the link, put the plugin in the link description below if you want to see it. And we're gonna add an image button, which is the image right here. And the money preview. Money preview is, you know, show your money, how much money you have. And then the shop frame, as you can see, I have visible on. As you can see, we got that, the roundify one. We got the scrolling frame, which is supposed to be the holder. And the UI grid layout. UI grid layout, layout is super useful when you are sorting out, you know, trails. If you make a script like, uh, make, Bam, 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 make code, isn't codes, codes, that, that'll be time consuming. And we want to use UI grid layout, which is super useful and not time consuming. Efficient way to make, to sort GUIs. Uh, if you go to the shop script uh, inside there, there's a template. Oh, visible to backup. Now put the trail right here. As you can see, you, this is the template. This one has the color frame, which means uh, how which means uh, what color does the trail has. And we got a buy button, we got these information. We'll, they will be super useful for this. Then we're gonna put it back in. And let's go to the shop local script. Oh, you may be thinking, wait, what the hell is this? Why is there a setting to open? Well, I'll explain to you when you use this item. So we got the variables, you know, we got the variables and we need to get the replicate storage, which is the trails where we make. And then we got the settings to open. So this is uh, your, your perspective. Your, your perspective is uh, what is your good, you know, motion, good stuff. You know, what is some uh, good GUI open and close? So 
if you pick one or something else, then we're going to set, then it will be a simple visible and off, which is this simple damn script right here. Uh, if you put it to set number 02, then it will make, do tween service, but you do tween position. Number three is uh, it does tween sizing. And number four is does both. If you pick five, it will, it will say straight back to one. It will pick one. So I'm going to leave it one for sure, because why not? And you can tell how, how many code you know, because you can just ignore whatever you want to go do it. All right, next up, we're going to see these functions. So the function is you need to make a trail, make a template. So we need to get the trial name. We need to get the trial price. We need to get the color and we need to tell where we're going to put it. And then, yes, it will we will have to clone it. Then we're going to get their name. We're going to get the info about the name and we're going to get their price and their color and their where to place. And we're going to return that to here. And this is the setup for the trails. Uh, this one's going to have a for loop that grabs every, every, every of the trail folder. Everything. Then we're going to get this function. And then we're going to use that. And this time, before we do that, we're going to have to update your inventory. So if you have a something trail, you know, if you have red, then you're going to say that you owned it, that you own it. You know some of the properties that I like my GUIs to be persistent and uh, good ways to do it. So uh, you can you can do that, whatever you want. So if it's equipped value, then and we're going to name it equipped. So this is where you equip it. Then we're going to ch then we're going to check the player who clicked the buy button. And then this is where the result is. So this one we're going to do this as a remote function. And this time we're going to replicate storage that events dot buy item uh, colon invoke server, and we're going to get the trail frame dot name. We're getting the name for the trail. So once we click that, we're going to go to server, and we're going to see this server events. It's like forty lines of code. No worries. Uh, so we're going to see this on server above when we equals that to the function. We need to get the player who clicked the button and we need to want the player who wants to click it. Then we got the trail. So we're fine first trial for the name if this uh, trail exists. If it's on your inventory, uh, so if this trail is on your inventory, then we're going to set it to true. So we're going to get some lot of statements. If it's an ex if this trail exists, if it has a price, if it's not on your inventory, then we're gonna check to if it's a, you're allowed to buy. If uh if your coins is greater than that, then we're gonna print print this statement, which is called uh, Anobot brought the that trail, whatever you want to call it. Then we're gonna deduce the price, and then you already have right here. So this one is important, guys. So. So local bowl equals instant dot new equals bowl value comma player dot trail in it. The reason why we need the bowl value because the bowl value represents your trail name means what inventory you have. So if you have red, then the bowl value is going to be red, and we're going to put that to your inventory. So yeah, that's a good way to sort things out. And then we're going to add a return statement. We're going to just brought it, and then it will signal that to the local script, which is our local result. And then it will grab our results. If it's not greater than that price, then you got not enough coins, then grind your own the way to freedom. Else, if it's in your inventory, then we're going to have to set up for the equip values. So if it's if it's equipped, if the equip value is not actually that trail, then we're gonna set it up, return to equip. Else, if you don't want it, then you unequip it. And then now we have right here. So if the result is brought, yeah, and this is all just me doing persistent stuff, some good stuff. Yeah, you want to call that. Yeah. So you can just uh, good round and make the UIs looks kind of cool. Yeah. And we as you can see is right here. So we got replicate storage.events.save. Yeah. So this is the data. 
which is from the the events right here I think this is right here yeah right here so this is the fire client we're getting the data if it's data saved then we're going to set it up and yes this one is uh, a render step and we're going to update and update and update the player's money until it updates so if the player uh, in, that coins the value is $30, then we're going to update the text that, is that the player has $30. Before you actually test it, make sure you publish your game to Roblox so your save data will actually work. Go to game settings, go to security, and uh, turn on these dudes. So allow HTTP profession and API services on. As you can see, I'm in my game right now. And you can see I have no money, and that means I can't click any of this. And what am I going to do is I'm going to uh, press F9 for getting... Okay, guys, yeah, sorry about the, you know, I accidentally recorded it. I actually ended with the recording, so no worries. My data already saved right now because I got the fire rail right here, so... Yeah, F9 is actually my stop recording, right? So please don't bully me in the comments, please. Anyhow, so it saves my data. As you can see, I brought everything. So red equip that. Unequip it. Rainbow that. As you can see, it actually works. So my data actually saved because I forgot to... Uh, because I actually ended my recording. So yeah, sorry about that. And yeah, that is actually it. If you like it, please subscribe. And also, I'll put the model in the link in the description if you want to use it for your simulator games. And yeah, if you like it, please subscribe for more Roblox Studio content. And uh, leave a like if you enjoy it, if it's helpful. If it's not helpful, leave a comment below. And anywho, enjoy. Peace out.